precision cabinetry is what this is. Precision cabinetry. <laughs> no, what this is is I'm, I've got to create a structure, uh, a little bit of uh, kind of scab together pieces of wood. And what this is going to be, this is the foundation for the uh, model that we're going to be doing. Uh, Reiner's going to try not to shoot my bald spot. There we go. So now I gotta twist this out a bit. There, like that. Go like that. Just gonna pin that in a little bit. Okay, so what this is, just so you can see it here, I'll pull this over here like this a bit. Let's angle this towards. So I'm gonna be building this. I'm gonna be putting here. I'm gonna be making this as a model on the stage. And uh, we're gonna make it look very much like this. So, as we get in here, so this part here is going to be this part here. This part here is this part here, which runs really flat, and it's going to dip down. So, and this is the back top part of the mountain. So what I do now is I take uh, mesh, all kinds of mesh, and I'm going to be shaping this around here. This is the really fun part. This is the part I enjoy the most in sculpting, is because what it is, is it's when something actually starts to take shape, and it really doesn't look like much right now, but this is the initial shaping that's going to go on in the sculpture. And then once it's all done, I, I cover this in plaster, and we start shaping the mountains, and then I'm going to make all the panels for the building, and we place them, and we'll structure and reconstruct the building so it's going to wrap around sort of like this for the window. And uh, all this stuff can be put on really loose. And if you guys have got to know me so far, you all know that I like things to be easy. I like to work really fast and easy. I don't like really complicated, fussy things. So let me try. Okay, that's that. Now, are we going to tell the chicken story? Here we are, speaking by the fireside. <laughs> Hi, guys. So, uh, I'm here to tell you a little bit of a story. Uh, so this is chicken wire. I love chicken wire. We work a lot with chicken wire in sculpture. We're always putting chicken wire under everything to put plaster around it. Later we shape the plaster to make it look nice. We're going to be building this here on this sort of a slope. And uh, every time I look at chicken wire, I can't help thinking of uh, my chicken story. Yeah, so the chicken man story. Uh, wow. Where do I begin with the chicken man story? When I first started in this business, in the film business, in the big movie business. I had a friend of mine, Arden Rishpan, and she would give me all these little jobs to do as an actor. And as an actor, anytime anybody would call me up, I'd say, yeah, sure, of course I can do it. So one day I got a call from Ingrid Fisher, and Ingrid Fisher was the top casting director for Astral Belt and Pathé. And I had done quite a bit of work as a bit actor, doing stunts and other stuff, uh, as a bit actor for um, Astral. Uh, Andrew. Uh, can you ride a unicycle? I said, yeah, sure, no problem. It says here on your resume, juggler clown. I, I really needed to know if you could ride a unicycle. Of course I can ride a unicycle. <laughs> I used to say of course to everything. People would call me up and say, hey, can you blow a bugle? I learned how to play the bugle in a couple of days because they always give you a couple of days between the time they say, hey, can you do something and can you be on set? But I got a nice surprise in my life. Uh, they wanted me on set the next morning at 7 o'clock with my unicycle. And uh, I had never touched a unicycle in my entire life. Um, matter of fact, I didn't even have a unicycle. I knew one person who had a unicycle. So here it was about 9.30 at night, and I'm calling around to try and get in touch with this one friend I had who had a unicycle. And he wasn't around. His mom said, oh, the unicycle's in the garage. It's got a broken pedal, but if you want, you can, I'm sure John David won't mind if you borrow it. Thank you, John David Gravener, for lending me your unicycle for my famous chicken man story. So I went to his house. I looked at the bicycle, the, the unicycle, and it had a broken pedal on it. So I fixed it with some wire, and I took it home. I, I got it home about 11 o'clock at night, and I practiced from 11 o'clock until about 3 o'clock in the morning on the unicycle. And by 3 o'clock in the morning, I could go about that far on the unicycle. Basically, I could stand up on the unicycle and fall over. So, <coughs> I show up, I have the unicycle in head. Uh, I go down to Manoir Le Moyne Hotel on uh, Maisonneuve in Montreal. 
7 o'clock, I'm there, they take me off to Riverdale High School, and um, they say they won't need me until 12 o'clock noon. I said, great. So I go in the dressing room, and I would push off of one wall, lean forward, unicycle, and slam into the other wall. Then I'd get up on that wall, and I'd push off of that wall, unicycle, slam into the other wall. And I did this for about an hour, and I was kind of banged up. By the end of, let's say about, I think it was 11.30 or so, I could go all the way down Riverdale High School, turn right, go all the way down, get off the unicycle, get back on the unicycle, go all the way down, turn left, get off the unicycle. I, said, I was feeling hot. Don Carmody comes up to me, the famous Don Carmody who now ended up uh, producing uh, all the Silent Hill stuff and he was one of the producers on Chicago, he got an Oscar for that. Back then he was a second unit director, he was doing uh, he was one of the producers on the film. The film was called Crunch. And uh, he said, Semple, where's your chicken outfit? Chicken outfit? What chicken outfit? He says, what the heck you been doing in the dressing room all this time? I wasn't going to tell him I was learning how to ride the unicycle for which he had hired me to be in this film, to be his unicycling dude. He says, get your chicken outfit on. We want to see you outside. And I went, outside? I could manage riding a unicycle down a corridor with no wind. But outside, okay, so I go in the dressing room, they got this chicken outfit for me. It's got these tiny little eyes, I got this beak, I got this headgear, I got these feathers, I have these wings with feathers all over the place. I have these massive chicken feet I have to wear. So I got this whole outfit on. I'm the mascot for the football team, I'm just finding this out. So here I am, I've got this wings, and I'm supposed to have a scepter, a king scepter, or a jester scepter, and I'm waving the lucky red long johns of the coach of the opposite football team. I had stolen them in a previous scene, and now, which we haven't shot yet, and I'm supposed to be taunting the opposite coach because I've stolen his lucky, lucky red long johns just before the big game, which is for all the marbles. And by the way, the coach is uh, John Vernon, the old Dean Wormer from Animal House. And our coach was uh, Mr. Roper from Three's Company. It was a Mark Warren film. So I have to take this scepter with this chicken outfit on, with the big feet, ride a unicycle, and I have to cross a bumpy football field on a windy day being chased by 50 extras. Okay. So I get out there on the unicycle. I go two feet. And I wipe out. Carmody looks at me and says, Simple, you think you can waddle? And I say, Yeah, I can waddle. He says, Well, look, we still got to do you on the unicycle, but let's wrap all the 50 extras for lunch right now, and we'll do the close ups of you. So they shot low angle on me, and I'd waddle like a bird, and I'd wave the thing, and I'd move my head and try and act like a bird on the bench. And they did all the close up stuff. Eventually, we got to do this big shot. So he calls back all the extras, they're all out there, and I, I have my arm on the shoulder of Bill Lee beside me. And I met Bill Lee later in Toronto, and we talked and had a laugh about this. Not Bill Lee, the pitcher. I said, Bill, are you religious? He said, no, not really. And I said, can you try to be religious? You know, Buddha, Krishna, Muhammad, I really don't care, but pray to somebody and help me get across this football field. Funny I mentioned Buddha first, eh? So anyway, I'm sitting there and I'm saying, dear God, I have sinned. I have been a bad boy. I have lied constantly. I've got myself into all kinds of messes. I don't care what you do. You help me get across this football field, and I will do everything I can to eliminate suffering from the planet. Well, what do you know? I went right across the football field that tape perfectly. And it was ideal. Carmody was happy. But that's not the funny part to the story. The funny part to the story is, the next shot was a quarter of a lap around the track. You know, there's always a, a track, running track around the football fields. So it was a whole quarter lap, and the camera's at the end of the lap of the straightaway, and I've got to cycle into the camera on a long lens. So I start over here. I go about this far to pedal brakes on the other side. <sighs> Carney says, ah, forget it, Semple. And I said, no, look, listen, Don, Don, let me try it with the broken pedal. So I get on there, and I'm not kidding you. The whole quarter lap was one continuous wipeout. I'm going, 
Whoa! 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 I'm seriously, I'm barely staying on the thing by just, just by a thread. I'm hanging on that unicycle. Pedals broken. I'm wobbling. The extras are running around me. All this kind of thing. I finally get past the camera on the straightaway. Darn Carmody. He's always smoking stogies. He used to be a stogie and uh, what was it? Um, Jim B. Anyway, I won't say what it was, but he'd always smoke these big fat cigars. Mm, classic. Gets access. Damn it, Semple. I never would have thought you could have hot dogged on the damn thing. <laughs> but I laughed my head off. He had no idea how freaked out I was riding that unicycle because I had the mask on my face. So it looked like I was doing all those fancy moves on purpose. I was dodging this guy and dodging that guy and flying this way and flying that way. When all the matter, truth be told, I was flipping out inside of my outfit, just hanging on by a thread. So, what does this mean? You know what's the amazing thing is you never know what you can do unless you try. And sometimes we just have to dive in and go ahead and do it. Because if we set up all these limits of the things that we can't do before we even try them, how are we ever going to know what we can do? So, what this taught me was, number one, uh, fulfill your promise. So I've been trying to eliminate suffering from the planet ever since. And number two, give it a shot. Try it. Do things. It's amazing how miraculous you are and what you're capable of when you actually try to do something. So for me, I always, I always love my chicken man story. And every time I hear a Buddha, I always think of that one day when I was praying. And it came true. So... Anyway, that's my chicken man story, and every time I see chicken wire, I'm always reminded of my, my funny chicken man story. I guess I better get back to work, and instead of all this yakking, you're going to hear me yak all the time. I yak constantly. So, anyway, thank you guys.